So let's continue on with our chapter five topics. And we're gonna work with the same spreadsheet, our January sheet in the workbook. And we're gonna take a look at pivot tables and all the different things we can do with pivot tables. So I'm gonna select a cell right in my pivot, in my actual table of information. I'm gonna go insert and I have two options, pivot table or recommended pivot tables. We'll start with the recommended pivot tables. And when I click on that, it gives me a listing of a whole bunch of different options that I could take a look at and decide which one I like or which one I want. And then I think I'm just gonna pick the top one. When I go okay, it creates a new sheet for me and there's my pre-designed pivot table. And here's the design window on the right. So in the design window, we can see our list of fields. We can see that we have a filtering area, a column area, a row area, and a value or variable area. This corresponds over to our pivot table where we have row labels and we can see the days of the week are there. So there's our weekday in rows. We have column area where we have the two meals, lunch and dinner, and there's our column area here. And then our variable that we're tracking is the sum of the revenue, showing sum of revenue here. We can name our pivot tables just like we named regular tables. So I'm just gonna call this pivot A, okay, and just enter. We can see that the active field is the sum of revenue. If I click over here, the active field is the weekday. One of the things that we can do is actually change the style of our pivot table. So in the table, pivot table tools, we can go over to design and we can pick one of the different styles. I'm gonna pick this orange one down here. And please remember, just like other figures we've seen in Excel, when you hover over it, it does tell you the name. So I'm picking that orange one. I can come up to the options for the style. I can band the rows or not band them. I can band the columns or not band them. Something else we can do with the pivot table, if we decide we don't like some of the labels here, so maybe this roll label, I don't like to see roll label, I just wanna see day of the week. Okay, and then I can double click the column to make that show better. Maybe I want dinner to show up centered, so I go to my home tab and center it. I can do the same thing for lunch, center it, and make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. And now here, instead of calling it grand total, I'm gonna call it both meals, oops, both meals total. And again, double click on the width to make it look good. Now something else that I can do and where why pivot tables have the name pivot in it is because we can change the layout nice and easy. So for example, say I want meals to be down by the weekdays. I just grab the meals from the column and put it in weekday. So now I have the day of the week and the meal below it. I can also pivot it or change it by moving the meal, clicking on it and dragging it above. So now I have dinners and all the days for dinners. I could even take that meal and bring it up to my filter area. And when I bring it up to my filter area here in the design, I have the filter at the top. Currently it's showing everything. And here I'm gonna show just dinner. So now we have the days of the week, the meal I'm looking at is just dinners. And again, we can go back and select everything. Now I'm gonna put meals back over here in the columns. Now something else that we can do in pivot tables is that we can actually format our variables. So there's a couple of different ways we can do that. So here's one way here. I'm in my pivot table in one of the variable cells and I can come down here in my design area, use the drop down area, value field settings. This window opens up, gives me the name, I could change the value I want. I could change it instead from sum to average or whatever I prefer, but that can also change the number format. So I'll click the number format, I'll go accounting, and I'll reduce it to zero decimals. And when I go okay, and okay again, you can see how this has changed to accounting format. Again, if I'm in my pivot table and I go to my analyze part of the pivot table tools, we also notice we have field settings up in this area, the active field. 
So when I click that field settings, notice it opens the same window and I could go into the number format again and then change the format. Let's maybe change it to currency and I'll just go OK and OK. And now they're all currency format. So one way using the drop down here, one way using the field settings here. I'm going to show you a third way. I'm going to right click my field, my cell pick field settings again, go to number format, and I'm going to switch it back to accounting and OK and OK. So now I'm back in accounting format. Other things that you can do with pivot tables, let's take a look at creating one the other way that uh, I mentioned. So I'm going to go back to my January sheet. I'm in my information. I'm going to go insert and pivot table. So last time we did recommended. This time I'm just going to go pivot table. This says, OK, is this the range you want? We're going to accept it and we're going to put it in a new worksheet and we're going to go OK. <coughs> Excuse me. I now have another worksheet that's opened. It's a blank pivot table and I have my design features over on the right. Now I can click on one of my variables and it'll automatically go to one of the fields down here that makes sense to Excel. Alternatively, what I could do is click it and drag it to where I want it to be. When I click meal, it brings it down to rows, but maybe I prefer that over in columns so I can just drag it. And then the revenue, well, that's a numerical field. So it says, well, it looks like that should be down here in our, vari uh, our values area. I'm going to change the format or the style, <coughs> excuse me, of my table again. So pivot table tools, analyze design. And I'm going to pick this one down here, the light orange pivot style medium three. And notice the name does come up when you hover over it. I'm going to change this again, make that my days of the week or day of week. I'm going to center the dinner so that it's nicely centered. I'm going to center lunch. I'm going to make that column a little bit bigger. And instead of sum of revenue, I'm just going to put total revenue. Okay. Other things that we can do, remember we could format. So I'm going to be in my pivot table. I'm going to go to my analyze window and I'm in my active field total revenue. And I'm going to go to field settings, go to the number format, and I'm going to change that to accounting and no decimals and OK. And now I have all accounting. Now I want you to notice something. I'm going to take my meals and put it over in the filter here. And currently I'm looking at everything. But something else I can do in a pivot table is to create what we call a slicer. So here I am in my pivot tables. I've got pivot table tools, analyze and I'm going to use this slicer option. When I create a slicer, it gives me an option of some of the different fields. I'm going to pick meal again and go OK. And now I have what we call a little slicer in Excel that allows me to choose. Maybe I just want to see the dinner so we can see how what does the slicer do? It filters the same way this option filtered here. So if I click over here, remember this was the filter on meal. My slicer is a kind of filter. If I click on lunch, then we also have lunch showing up. If I want multiple ones, I can click on the multi-select and now I have both of them. I don't want any filtering. I'm going to just select the lunch there. I can undo it and now I have no filtering happening. The same way we had chosen a style for a pivot table, we can choose a style for a slicer. So notice when I click on the slicer, I have some sizing handles that I can change the size of it. I can change this, the width, the height. I can go into my options, change my slicer style, making it that same rough orange. Actually, I think I'm going to make it the lighter orange. So it's a little easier on your eyes. In that same option window, I have a button sizer and a slicer sizer. When I click on the height of the slicer sizer, notice how the height gets larger and larger and the width gets larger and larger. Now notice when I'm clicking the width of the slicer, 
the buttons also get bigger. Okay, when I make the width of the slicer smaller, the buttons get smaller. If I come over to the buttons, when I click on the width of the buttons, well, I'm making the buttons wider, so the slicer has to get wider. But when I make the buttons taller, the slicer itself doesn't have to get taller. And I'm just going to go excessively here so you can see how I've changed that. I'm going to bring those down so they're a reasonable size. I'm going to bring in the width a little bit because I don't want it that big. I can change the columns. Instead of having rows, I can have two columns. Okay, depends on what you like to see. So I'm going to change that to one. Something else we can do is I'm going to create another slicer here. So in my pivot table, analyze, insert slicer, and now I'm going to pick weekday. And here we go, okay. There's another slicer. Again, I can resize it using the sizing buttons or just the width or the height, whatever you prefer. I can select one of them that deselects everything else and now I have only a single selection. I can select another one, again, single selection. I can click this so I have multi-select and I want Sunday, Friday, Saturday, and let's deselect Tuesday. So maybe I wanna take a look at those. Now, notice how different for the slicer I can see which days are chosen, but for here, I also see the days that are chosen. For here, if I pick, let's come up, oh, I deselect lunch, I can see that dinner is chosen and dinner is chosen. Now I'm gonna go into my design here and I'm gonna get rid of my meal. So I'm just gonna drag it and make it go away. I'm also gonna get rid of my filter here. I'm gonna select all and go okay. So notice the filter for this days of the week matches the slicer filter. So sometimes, you know, you might want to have just the slicer and not have that actual field in your pivot table. It will actually be up to you. Let's take a look at a few other things. Let's redo the design of this slicer tool. Let's change it to the orange so it matches the theme. Okay. We have slicer captions. It has the weekday. I could change that if I wanted to. And here we have the meal. Another thing we can do with the pivot table, I'm in my table and I can go to the analyze tab again and I can insert a timeline. Now the timeline slicer will only bring up date functions and we only have one in this information and that's our actual date. So we'll go OK. And now I have like a little calendar. Just going to make these slicers a bit smaller so we can put everything together. And same type of thing. I can resize it to however I like. I can also pick that timeline, go to the timeline tools, options, and pick the same color style. I have different options for years, quarter, months, days. If I go to years, I'm only showing one year. If I go to quarters, I'm showing four quarters. I can select a single quarter. There's no quarter four data. So there's quarter two, there's quarter three, there's quarter two again. I can also multi-select by dragging the little three dot arrows here. And I'm gonna drag this over here and all my information actually is in quarter one. So I'm gonna go quarter four and then quarter one. I can go to the months, same type of thing. I can pick April, there's nothing in April, nothing in March, nothing in February, extend it out up to January. There's all my data showing up. And then finally, I can go down to individual days, pick a single day or pick a range of days, okay? Please note that it has to be in sequence. So that's a little option about different things with pivot tables. Now something else that we can do, I'm gonna go back to my sheet one where I made my original pivot table. So I'm in my pivot table, analyze, this is my pivot A. We're gonna do a calculated field now. So here I'm in my pivot table, pivot table tools, analyze, and I'm going to go to field items and sets. And I'm gonna put in a calculated field and I'm gonna call the calculated field tips. And I just want to calculate what are the tips based on the revenues. So the formula is going to equal to P 
pick my field revenue. I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.15. So roughly a 15% tip times the revenue will give me the amount of the tip and we can go OK. And notice now we have for each of the meals, we have the sum of the two tips. Now I'm going to take my meals and I'm going to put that up in my filter area just to make this a little easier to look at. Let's create another calculated field. So again, I'm in my table, pivot table tools, analyze, field items and sets, calculated field. And here I'm going to put tips and revenue together. Just come here, get rid of the zero. So equals tips plus revenue and go OK. And now I have another calculated field. And notice how it covered, it uh, carried over the formatting of the accounting format here. My sum of tips and revenue together is also formatted the same way. Now something that can happen that may be a little difficult for us is that if we go into our original data here and let's change, actually let's come back to sheet one. Let's do, what date is it I want to look for? Uh, 1, 1, 21. So I'm going to put date here. I'm going to get rid of meal and I'm going to go date 1, 1, 21. Okay, and currently it's showing as no information there. I'm going to go back into January and I'm going to put the revenue here was, let's make it $225. And let's say we had 21 customers. And here I'm going to say that's, well, the amount spent per person is the 225 divided by the 21. So now on the lunch, I have $225. When I come back to my pivot table, it hasn't changed at all, okay, even though both meals are supposed to be there. So what I have to do is I have to refresh my pivot table. So I'm in my table, I go to analyze, and here we have under analyze, refresh. And now you can see the 225. And if we were worried about the meal, let's put the meal here. So here we have all meals. And I had that, I just put in, that in for lunch. So there's the 225. So this is an important feature. You can actually change your data here. Let's maybe change that to 325. When I come over to my pivot table, it hasn't changed until I physically go in my table, analyze, refresh my data, and refresh. And now it has been updated. So we've covered a number of different things with pivot tables. Hopefully that's going to get you started and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks.